Let's check in on the um, uh, Twitter report. This mm -hmm. is a uh, show that you may be familiar that what they do is they read tweets and report on it. It's activism. It's uh, this is what uh, activism is all about. It's according to um, uh, Jimmy Dore. Um, here he is. This is a, a clip of uh, Jimmy Dore um, where he's, I guess, mad at. Well, you know, this is based on a tweet that Emma did. Um, and Emma, what was the uh, nature of the tweet? Why don't you tell us what it was? I guess I was just um, responding to these protesters who were outside of Ocasio-Cortez's office, you know, not outside of Nancy Pelosi's office or even Pramila Jayapal, who chairs the Progressive Caucus, but outside of AOC's office, um, it's kind of a, a, the force the vote crowd. And and so this is a this is about a group of people who cannot give up on their failed tactic to force a losing vote on Medicare for all, mm -hmm. which ostensibly would have identified who was against Medicare for all in the House. Now, we know for a fact that at least 110 of the House members have not signed on to uh, the Medicare for all resolution. So we know at least 110 of those, but presumably this vote, which everyone knew would fail, because it's of course the Republicans get the vote too, would have smoked out those people who don't support Medicare for all, even though it would have been a, what is known as a free vote. In other words, I can vote for Medicare for all, because I know it's not going to pass if I'm really secretly, because this is this is all based fact, on the idea that there are secret opponents of Medicare for all, which I'm sure there are. Maybe 10 percent of those people who signed on to the, the thing are secret opponents of Medicare for all. But of course, they could have also if they were going to sign on to a resolution supporting Medicare for all, they would have also taken a vote that they knew wouldn't provide Medicare for all. So you'd be left with that same 110 people that we already know publicly don't support Medicare for all if yes. you want to challenge them. In and fact, it would muddy the waters more because people could take symbolic votes, as you say, and we might not know that when it came down to an actual vote down the line, they would not be able to. Uh, let's they, say it worked they would exactly like sure, they, they thought sure. it would. And we find out that there are 115 members of the 220 some odd uh, uh, Rep uh, Democratic caucus who are not supporters of Medicare for all. Presumably at that point, they're going to be primaried. And since we already know 110 of those, I wonder how many of these activists have started to fundraise or identified or develop the apparatus in which to primary these people. They're going to do it outside of the Justice Democrats because they're sellouts too. Well, they have like anti-vaxxers speaking at this rally, so it's it's well. It's, that's yeah. this is we're not even there yet. So yeah. they're going and protesting in front of the at least most vocal advocate who would have surely voted for Medicare for all in this losing vote that would have never been even uh, taken up in the Senate. And she's not in leadership and doesn't have the ability to spearhead so, many of these things so yeah any rational human being who doesn't believe this is about performance who actually believes it's about like there's a theory of change behind this would say those are people who don't really know like are, are completely don't even seem to care about strategy or tactics it's all performative well, I mean, and that's that the problem with the, that's the problem with force the vote is it turned an opportunity to leverage Pelosi, which we all agreed needed to be done into a narrow demand for a vote like that's pointless for the reasons you're talking about that just serve propaganda purposes for a 2022 primary primaries that they've shown absolutely no, um, no interest in, 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 in building an institution to uh, deal with it or yeah. whatever. it's about it's about going after the squad but, for views. Yes. So let me do, let, let me just say like, this. like the only problem I had with Emma's tweet was that she called it a red brown alliance. This is a green brown alliance. And the reason they don't identify as greens anymore is because the question uh, when posed as yes, the squad has limitations. What have you built, actually? Like besides these like presidential, like a great that you improved on Jill Stein as a candidate, you actually haven't taken, if it's so easy to force this stuff with four people in Congress, maybe you should have taken those four seats. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, they, the, the, but, like, but, but where is the Green Party or whoever they want to call them, the people, 
you know, the PPM or if they still exist, if they haven't. That's imploded. what this is. Yeah, this one. That's um, what this is. If they haven't imploded, where's their, where, where are their candidates who are running for Congress? And why don't we all know about them at this point? Are they fundraising for these people? Have they created an apparatus for them? I mean, likely because they if it like only them. takes four votes, then they should. This is doable. Do it. Do, do it. it. Go with the blue districts and find. But, but just know, play. Just, play. Let me just play say, this. They're yeah. just gonna. They're just gonna primary AOC because it's gonna be the most useful for propaganda value. <laughs> they're not gonna actually do this wide. Like the Tea Party instance, right? Tea Party put a hundred plus people in Congress. I mean, I I would love to see that happen uh, for progressives too. Okay, so let's play this. So uh, Jimmy. So I had uh, a tweet his... making fun of that, right? And then Jimmy just now on the Twitter report uh, responded. Here's the uh, Twitter report for the day. <laughs> Emma Viglin says this. She goes, there, uh, there's no, I know. <laughs> when you, oh, when you grow up rich in a cul-de-sac, you find, you find pretty words to shit on people who are actually fighting for things. When pretty you grow words. up super rich in a cul-de-sac and your parents are corporate lawyers, shit libs. And you've had every advantage handed to you your whole fucking life. You're never, when did she ever fight for anything? Never. Again, people who are sitting at home on their fucking millionaire asses, pause it, pause never it. doing Let's fucking be anything. Before, pause it. Before Jimmy Dore was given a job at TYT, right around the same time that Emma was given a job at TYT, he had done one of the millions of stand up specials that Comedy Central do, that are literally the most disposable garbage things in the world. I think people are aware that I have many friends who have been in the stand-up world. Um, I was never particularly in the stand-up world so much. I was more stand-up adjacent, as it were. I performed in a couple, but I was never really a working stand-up per se. And to a person, these people tell me like, yeah, no, I don't know. It was some type of like just road comic sort of didn't, uh, I mean, nobody thought it was funny. Um, and TYT, successfully um, built his career, built his channel, hired uh, Jimmy, just like they hired Emma. So I'm yeah, not sure- Yeah, by the way, I, I I don't know what, right. I was, uh, the, my my parents, uh, which if they're shit libs, which, you know, like, yes, they my, my mom has, you know, done fundraising stuff with Kirsten Gillibrand. I was open about that. Uh, they certainly were not in any orbit near TYT. In fact, they didn't they get you the job. From no, Jen? I. I, I, I applied. Uh, I got the job. I worked with a uh, total creep in Jordan Sheridan and put in a ton of time uh, and worked for very low wages. And uh, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I should say that I was an intern. Right. So I I, I worked really hard and then they gave me a job and I loved working there and they treated me well, right. Also, yeah. I mean, you don't have to justify it. The point being that Jimmy's uh, was no uh, differently situated than you were when you both applied for a job at TYT. He inherited uh, the channel they built for him. But let's hear his insight here on and the I, Twitter I report. I want to make one point about like attacking activists, which you look at the way Jimmy Dore attacks the Medicare for All activists, like the DSA people that were actually doing this when he was busy supporting Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, in the primary, um, he loves attacking activists. This is all about attacking the real activists. And is Jimmy supposed uh, uh, an activist, or just he's just mad that the protesters out in front of AOC's thing? There is no, there is no useless protest. And look, Jimmy gave away the game here on uh, Tucker Carlson's show. He sees it as a negative that there are progressives in the Democratic caucus. Because according to him, it gives the uh, people the false sense that that there is an opportunity to grow that uh, progressiveness and to have the Democratic Party do something. And of course, he's talking about Medicare for all. Let's just be clear. Medicare. Medicare was something that was passed by the Democrats. I'm not saying that this is the same Democratic Party, but the point is, is that, yes, it's conceivable that we could get to a place where there is an expansion and then ultimately a Medicare for all with the Democrats. Is that happening now? No. The leadership clearly is against it. There's no doubt about it. But they're right. sclerotic and they're old and it may be different. So we have a new crop. But Jimmy is more interested in the People's, People's Party um, that exists as an email list essentially at this point because they promote him. But continue. Right. 
fucking millionaire asses never doing fucking anything. Anything. Anna Kasparian sitting in her $24 million studio telling, wagging her finger at other people who are actually out there pressuring politicians. Pause it for one She second. says there's Am no I understanding wrong, of... But did Jimmy not get paid? I mean, they keep talking about these $20 million investment at uh, TYT. Yeah. What what paid Jimmy for five years? Yes, exactly. I mean, it's interesting. Like Where he, was didn't, his bring, he, he didn't bring any it was the of same this freaking studio. It was the same studio. He didn't bring this up at the time when he was working there and taking the money. But well, that was uh, smart. And, and another thing which is interesting, um, like he talks about how, oh, what are you doing? You're just sitting in your studio. I, he, he's very cozy in Fox News' studio, and he's very cozy going to Joe Rogan's studio to talk and not go out there and interview what people. What is it exactly that this guy did? He went Bef and gave a before speech? Before I uh... worked here, before I worked here, my job was to be on the road on a weekly basis talking to people. I went to a variety of Trump rallies. I went to a variety of activist, um, you know, demonstrations from the left and the right. Uh, I spoke to people who were poisoned in rural communities in Delaware by their water source and were suing uh, a chicken processing plant that was near there. I went to uh, eastern Tennessee and rural areas to talk to different activists there. So, like, I, I'm not exactly sure what he's done that's a little bit more on the ground than me. Oh, he does live shows. That, that, right. He does, he does yeah. live shows in comedy clubs, and that's the way you pay for a $2 million uh, home. But continue. She says there's no understanding of how goals are achieved historically because these folks are being misled by red brown alliance media figures sapping them of energy and cash progress. So what she's doing is undermining activists in the middle of a, a big 50 different cities for Medicare for all. Hey, why don't you ask to speak? at that and go out and give your opinion why don't you go out there and interview some of those people and tell them about the red brown alliance that you're so worried about that you have no fucking idea what you're talking about and by the way these are the kind of people who like to quote marx as if they're smart because they went to good colleges that got paid for by their corporate lawyer parents but if they ever got within five feet of a worker they'd get punched in the fucking face you know what Emma Viglin never got Jimmy anywhere here. near a fucking worker. Pause it, pause you know it, pause it. Jimmy. What's interesting, too, is his opinion of working people or just people in general seems to be quite low and uh, lower than me. As I said, I did a lot of work in the field, never was punched in the face, spoke to a lot of people. Sometimes the interviews were a little bit contentious, never punched in the face. So my, I don't know. Why does Jimmy dislike working people so much or have such a low opinion of them well no it's just jimmy likes to pretend like he's a tough guy and or listen, or he's imagining me line. getting punched in the face by right. by somebody which i think of is of course is exactly course. what he's what trying he to wants. give you know a suggestion right. there yeah. here's the thing jimmy has been running like a little coward for me for over five years he deploys his wife occasionally to respond to me on twitter but he has been running like a coward and people can go back we will put a link in this uh, YouTube description of the original debate uh, that we had back when I just thought, well, Jimmy's sort of a dim, uh, dim bulb, but whatever. He's uh, on our side. Um, and people can look at that and know that he's been running like a little sniveling coward. And he knows he's afraid of me. And he knows he's listening to my voice right now. Not exactly in this moment. After it goes out. I know he's listening to this. Yeah. You know it. Jimmy, you're a coward. You know it. I know it. Everybody else knows it. You want to be a tough guy, come be a tough guy. Come on the show. I'll invite you into the studio. It's weird how he'll he'll respond to me. He'll respond to Anna. He'll respond to Jamie when Jamie was working here. He won't respond to Matt. He won't respond to you. What like what what is the through line that we're seeing here, huh? Uh, I right, also well, just like to add a couple ahead. more things. Um, I I think it bears repeating that his entire goal here is to bash advocates and activists. So the it, he's really projecting because this entire stunt is like he said on Tucker. He doesn't think it's possible to pressure these people. He thinks they're there as controlled opposition, and so he's just yep. there again for this 
Like dead ending green party bullshit, honestly. He was yep. just doing a segment on DSA and saying how they can't get anything done and they suck. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he's and he he tries to do this from the left, but of course, whenever he when Tulsi Gabbard, the person who said a uh, single payer and getting rid of duplicative insurance was un-American, he's like, oh well, I'm going to endorse her for a foreign policy. I mean, he's 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 a he's Folks, a hack. There's more of what right. you just saw La- where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.